Hi, this is Lexi Nieto, voice of Tomo Aizawa from Tomo-chan is a Girl, and you're listening to Podcast Across Worlds, Hawaii's number one anime podcast. Welcome to Podcasts Across Worlds, where we like to watch a lot of anime, read a lot of manga, and talk about it for hours. I'm your host, Lahila Superfina, and today we have the wonderful, the amazing voice actors, actress, singer, and host of Shonen Showtunes, Lexi Nieto. What up? What an (laughs) intro. Jeez Louise, I feel like I got to really work hard to live up to that hype. That's really kind. (laughs) You really don't have to because you already lived it up. And so you have to make sure we tell people who you are. (laughs) We have to be true. (laughs) You're too kind, truly. You're too kind. (laughs) We had you on Podcast Across Worlds previously talking about mostly about Tomo-chan is a girl because you are the voice of (laughs) Tomo-chan. So what has your life been like? after the season because girl you've been busy (laughs) it's good but like you know because of you know the way you record by yourself and you just go in and you record the thing and then you know you don't really have like feedback in person so I haven't like done any convention stuff yet so I'm like I'm still like I don't know I had one I think I might (laughs) have talked about this before but I had I went to one convention where I was doing some panel hosting um Mm -hmm. and people recognized me and people would come up to me and they were like do you are you so much I was like oh my god what is going on um (laughs) Which is whack, right? Because, like, that's usually me. I'm usually the person to be like, hi, I know you from this and I think you're great. Whatever. (laughs) Um, But it's been good. And I have um, my first convention appearance coming up at the end of this month, which is ridiculous and crazy. And I'm very excited. Yeah. (laughs) How exciting. Yeah, it's wild. It's so wild. So how was that process? Did they reach out to you like, hey, we would like you to be at our convention? And what is it like on your side when the conventions reach out to you? Yeah, it's it's I mean, it, I, I I know I I'm going to probably sell myself short as usual um, and attribute it all to Rico because he is the one who has the um, close relationship with the team at the particular convention. I'm going to Otakon. Um, he's been a couple years. Yeah. He's been to it a couple years in a row and he is pretty tight with their team. And so they had mm-hmm. somebody drop and they were, and he was like, I know somebody who could fill the spot. I know somebody who could fill the spot. So it was very, it was very cool. Um, but I'm, I'm just excited to, you know, have people know that I really, really want to do that. And I have a lot of programming uh, that we will talk about later on um, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that I really, really want to get in the circuit and then around, (laughs) around wherever they'll have me. (laughs) So do you have to prep anything for this convention? Because from my experience at conventions, it's just not a lot because I'm in Hawaii and such. And right, I right. think about my finances because <laughs> going to conventions is not cheap. <laughs> right. No, for sure. <laughs> uh, so there's the guests. Sometimes they have, well, not sometimes. They have the panels and then sometimes they have a booth where yeah. people line up and then they pay for like autographs, pictures and such. Do you have to prep for that stuff? Yeah, I um. I'm, I have to gather, you know, the prints and stuff that I should have at my table. I haven't had a chance to commission anybody yet, which is I'm like, like hard on myself for because I really would love to have some original artwork to, you mm-hmm. know, showcase somebody's incredible work. Um, but to have like prints and stuff and to have like, I need to get markers. I need to get, I need to like set up the payment system. I have to like <laughs> buy, I have to make like, you know, banners to make sure that people know who I am. And cause I don't mm-hmm. look like an anime character. So, you know, they don't, they don't know who I am. <laughs> Um, but all that stuff kind of, it's a lot, it's really exciting and it's really cool, but there is a lot that you have to, especially when it's your first time, there's a lot that you have to prepare and make sure that you have ready so that, that, you know, you, you know, it's the first one. So you gotta, you gotta start with the bang. You gotta really go hit the ground running. Oh yeah. First impressions too. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's like, it's very exciting to like have the power to like, okay, I can set the tone. I can come off strong. I can go guns blazing, but 
I have to make sure that I, again, like I can follow through. I can really live up to it. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. So what kind of advice were you given for your first convention as a guest? Yeah, I mean, it's, I, I don't know if I, because I, I haven't really like sought out advice in particular just because I've been to so many of them and I now mm -hmm. am lucky enough to know people who guest very frequently. So I just, a lot of watching and a lot of listening and even helping Rico at his table sometimes. I've gone to conventions with him and helped him out. Um, mm -hmm. So just seeing, like I've, I've done a lot of observing and a lot of like internal note taking. Um, and I feel like that's, I, I know for me, the way that I learn that's probably the best way is just by observing, seeing, seeing the things in action, seeing how it actually goes and like putting mm -hmm. myself imagining, okay, if I were in this situation, how would I do this? What would I want to do differently? What is more me? Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. Oh, I'm so excited for you. <laughs> Thank you so much. And where is this convention? Let everybody it is in know. Washington, DC at the end of this month, the last weekend of July. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> And then, so have you been working in the studio a lot too during this whole time that we haven't talked and such? You're like, what have you been doing? Like, can you talk about it? Yeah, yeah. Um, I've done uh, several like smaller, smaller things. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. I was, I think it was out by the, when we talked first. I'm a little monkey boy in a show called By the Grace of the Gods. I really love him. His name is Beck. He's a little little scrappy monkey boy. And I, I love to play boy. I want to play boys all the time. It's so fun. I feel like I am a little boy. It's great. <laughs> um, and then also another boy character. I am um, twins with Marissa Duran in Ancient Magus Bride. We play the, oh my gosh, I'm terrible. St. George twins in Ancient Magus Bride. What? Yeah, they're little <gasps> redheaded twin magic people. It's great. <laughs> little twin magic people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, and then I also was um, Ansley in Why Rayliana Ended Up at the Duke's Mansion, which is another oh. uh, show that Caitlin directed. Yes. So she's like, she's very Tomo, but she's like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a lady knight and I'm very like cool. But she has like cool red hair and like is a badass. So I was like, I love to see Tomo in medieval times. Very cool. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that totally reminded of when Mikhail and I were watching that, and he was like, "That's Lexi." I was like, wait, what? Why? <laughs> and then I feel like it's very easy to tell. I don't really like do voices. It's it's usually just me, but like with different energy, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and then I noticed it was another redhead and another strong woman. I was like, yeah, of course, type <laughs> And then, oh my gosh, I was reading this webtoon. It's called um, The King's Knight and such. And it's about this female knight who came from a country that was conquered by this kingdom and such. And she was going to be, you know, one of those soldiers that were going to get killed off because they were like the enemy. Right. But then the king saw potential in her and said, I want to knight you. And she's like, what? Period. I'm a woman and <laughs> and I was thinking if this is animated I think Lexi would be oh. great for this character that's so cool oh how nice and, and the funny thing was it was this character is also a redhead <laughs> <laughs> just keep the was, trend going I love it <laughs> and then I was also thinking that typecast I was like no I don't want her typecast no I <laughs> I'm, listen I'm conflicted I love it. No, I listen. Work is work, and I'm happy to do anything. So I don't care what they look like. I just me and Marissa both. I don't know if you know uh, Marissa Duran is another actress in the community. Me and me and her both just keep bringing in the redheads. Keep them, keep them coming. <laughs> yeah, I was like thinking, yeah, and that person's also loud, and they have a lot of energy. Yeah, Lexi would totally match them. <laughs> That's so kind. I appreciate that. And then I was thinking about, you know, I like Lexi's voice. It's really unique. And I'm starting to like it more and more. And I really like how it opened my ears to variety. Mm -hmm. Because not going to lie, as a anime enthusiast fan who watches a lot of anime, I used to kind of picture what the voice would be. And then when oh, I yeah. find out what it actually is, I'm like, I don't know about this. I have oh, my for sure. imagination. It's going to take me a while to get used to this. Absolutely. 
thanks to you, I've been open to other varieties. I'm like, okay, yes, I can see this. Like, it's almost instant for me to be like, oh, yes, that matches now. <laughs> right, right. I totally get that. And it that made me remember when you were saying that you used to watch anime and be like, oh, I recognize this voice and oh, this person yeah. and this person was in this other anime. And <laughs> it made me want to know that which animes were you watching? I don't think I asked you mm -hmm. uh, the last time you were on Paul what animes you were actually watching when you were doing this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, well, the first one that I finished all the way through was Oran High School Host Club, which is wild because, as I'm sure you know, Caitlin directed and, of course, starred in that show. So to yeah. have that be my first anime that I ever finished and then her be the director of the first thing that I play a lead character in, like, it's... It's still, I'm, I, I still, I don't think it's even still like really processed in my brain yet. I'm, I just kind of have to like put it to the side to actually function in everyday life. <laughs> um, crazy. I like a full yeah. circle. Oh, for sure. Exactly. It's just, it's, it's my brain melts out of my ears. Um, she had a, uh, a big poster um, that I guess was at a convention that she did back in the day when Oran was still like, like the new hot thing um, mm -hmm. and it's signed by all the actors that were in the show and she just has that in her booth at the studio so I I was holding it on our last day of recording for Tomo I, I, I held it and took a picture with like the final screen of like all the uh, the five main characters posing at the end um, <laughs> I'm like crying like with this I was like it's just so wild um, um. anyway that was not the question that was just an <laughs> anecdote that's relevant um, Soul Eater was a, was a big one story. Yeah, it was it was the transition from Oran to Soul Eater that I started to be like, wait a minute, I recognize that sound. And then <laughs> Googling the, you know, whatever. I don't even think behind the voice actor was a thing back then. Like BTVA wasn't even, like I couldn't even see like, you know, their headshots next to the characters. Like I just had to look it up and like really find if I could figure out who it was. And then mm -hmm. um, I'm sure I talked about like vo the voice actor panels on YouTube is where I really like flourished in my, in my knowledge. I was like, ah, yes, this is where I get all the good content. Um, Thank you, YouTube. <laughs> ex no, for real. What else? Um, yeah. Soul Eater and Oran were the big ones. Oh, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood was also in that bunch. Mm -hmm. um, fairy Tale. This was all like a very, like a very specific time in my life between uh, middle school and high school that I was just like, gorging myself on this stuff um but those are those are the big ones mostly the one i feel like made me kind of click in my head like hey i recognize these voices was actually <laughs> you're gonna laugh at this my hero academia oh yeah <laughs> dude because that and that was the thing right it's like i had all these from back in like the 2010 ish area and then i came back to it i came back to anime like like 2019 i think so my mm. hero had been out for a couple years already they were already on season mm -hmm. four when i started watching um mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but i immediately as soon as i started watching that my brain was right back in and i was like oh that's that and that's that uh, yep that's this that person i don't know I this know, person right? i need to look them up there was a lot of new people which was really exciting but like mm -hmm. you know 75 percent of the cast i was like ah yay i know them hooray <laughs> Yeah, because they have so many characters and there's yeah. like different voices. And Absolutely. like some of the voices sound super familiar. You're like, where have I heard this? <laughs> They're the best, man. But yeah, that's that's the show that got me back into it. Because for a while I stopped watching like the end of high school into college. I was like, oh, I do theater now. I don't care about anime anymore. And then, you know, I played Persona 5 and went to one convention and I was like, uh oh, I think I still love this. <laughs> Honestly, for me, it was just the access of anime because yeah. at one point I had access to it. And another point, it just got cut off because maybe I didn't have the networks. And then I was like, okay, I don't have cable. I only have a laptop. This was in college days. Right. <laughs> like, oh, right. Where, where can I find these animes? Oh, yeah. And then I still haven't touched Crunchyroll. And once I finally did, brah. It just yeah, it's opened doors for me. <laughs> it is so much more accessible nowadays, though. Like, I, I, I have only slightly some shame. I was on those pirating websites, man. I was like in, on those virus caked, awful websites, just being like, "Next episode, next episode, buy pop up, next episode, next episode." I was. Oh my gosh! I, I did what I could. Bringing me memories. <laughs> Mine was like LimeWire, and yeah, I, I, yeah, like it was on queue for so long for me. <laughs> Yeah, pending Q, pending Q. <laughs> People who did not live through those days, 
you don't know no and the, be glad that the it's struggle so, we had but you can get it now e- easier and you're also supporting the artist while doing that instead of being like you know an 11 year old or a 13 year old in the seventh grade being like i'm gonna find anime on youtube what? i'm gonna watch it i'm gonna watch it in 10 10- one episode in 10, 10 minute segments and they have English English dub, but there's like oh Romanian gosh. subtitles. Like it's it's ridiculous. I, I did I did what I could. And this this is like before when YouTube had like they were hard on the copyright stuff. And oh right. YouTube was literally the baby days. Yeah. <laughs> they literally, didn't know anything. They were- 10 minute segments for like one episode and you had like yeah. one, two, three. Some had yeah. like to part 10 it was yeah. ridiculous yeah it was like three minute increments i'd be like i'll do it i will spend this whole youtube video watching two lines of dialogue and i will i will go to the next part man i am so appreciative of what we have now because there's not only like country of animation netflix yeah. hulu it's all hulu over kind of like does that and then Amazon jumped on it. Yeah. And there's like other platforms I don't even know of yet. Right. And it's so much more in the mainstream. Yeah. Uh, I know there's like some anime that came out and I go to a live chart and I notice Crunchyroll, Funimation, Hulu, Netflix were not listed. I'm like, I don't know these other platforms. <laughs> like, what is this? A Chinese only one? What? Do they have subtitles? Please have subtitles. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You just like study really hard to see if you can kind of follow what's going on and see if you can get enjoyment out of that. <laughs> <laughs> so with your passion with anime and voice acting, get to you know the voice actors. What like what made you start Shonen Show Tunes? Like, I know it was an idea, but what made you act on it? Uh-huh. You- well, it's a, it's sort of kind of big step to actually do stuff, you know? This, absolutely, you're correct. <laughs> wow, just that. That could be, the, the if there's like a subtitle, if there's a quote that you want to pull from this, that's it right there. It's, it's actually tough to do stuff. It, that's, that's what's happening right now. Um, it was just that. Um, what really like, you know, made it into a thing that I really wanted to do was, I think I may have talked about this before, but seeing um, Robbie Damon, Max Middleman and Ray Chase do their live comedy show called Lava. They do a three person improv show at um, pretty much every convention that they go to. Um, and I loved it. I was like, oh my God. Cause they had talked about, of course, you know, it, it was, it was my same cycle of like playing persona five, being obsessed with these actors, watching every interview under the sun and then hearing Robbie like talk about it and talking about how, you know, when you're going to so many conventions and, you know, you're not bringing your own programming per se, it kind of becomes monotonous of just like, it's a Q and A panel. You go sign the autographs. People ask the same 10 questions over and over again. He was like, we are literally trained performers. We've all, we all have experience in improv. We all have experience in theater. Why don't we bring our own things to these conventions and be able to Show, not only showcase to these people, bring something new, but also keep our skills sharp and not just have it be the same thing over and over again. We're gonna mm-hmm. we're gonna do new things and we're gonna show sides of our um, expertise that maybe these people don't see all the time. Right. Um, so that to me, I was like, that's freaking brilliant, and I want more <laughs> of these actors to have a chance to do that. So at the time, I was like, I'm. I'm just a little guy on the internet. I don't know. I just like this stuff, but I have a knack for putting stuff together and like show making. So I was mm-hmm. like, I could potentially reach out to these actors and start this and maybe they'll really enjoy it. And then I can just be like the host that comes along and I'll, you know, just <laughs> make the show happen and do all the hard work. So they don't have to, all they have to do is just show up, sing a song, do a monologue, and then that be it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, it's, very cool now that I could potentially be a part of it. Like as also a guest, like I didn't, I didn't even like think that far. I was like, Oh man, I didn't even, that's really cool that I'm like, I'm the host, but also people are like, I'm excited to see you. Like that's, you're lying. That's not real. Um, But it was, it was seeing that the lava show and then being lucky enough to get in touch with Rico because he's just, as as we all know, the best person in the universe and he's incredibly mm-hmm. receptive to everything ever. So having him be sort of like my right-hand man and sort of my, my, my Kickstarter, essentially, um, that's really what took it off the ground is because I was, I kind of had to fight for myself a little bit and to, and, you know, with, with some of the, 
like the first experience I had trying to get it at a convention, it wasn't met very well. Cause they were like, who are you? You don't know, like, you're not, you don't mess with the guests. Like that's not your thing. But having him be like, no, I really believe in this. I really think it's going to be good. You will benefit from this. So just having a, a, a good, a good buddy in it with me is really, and then having like my friends constantly telling me that I, I can do it. Um, and that was another thing too. My roommate, um, we were literally at a food court at a mall and she was like, what if you did, what if you did this? Like, what if you actually, like, you're going to, ha you have this opportunity. Why don't you just do it? I'm like, man, you're right. I guess I could. I'll bring it up to him, I guess. I don't know. And then it ended <laughs> up happening. So yeah, it's, it's, it's just a matter of being surrounded by excellent people and also being obsessive and not being able to think about anything else <laughs> until you do it. <laughs> and then for when you're interviewing for the YouTube channel, <clears throat> what is your process? Like you, how do you pick your guests? Like what, what do you look for? Tell us about it. <laughs> right. That's, that's tricky too. Cause I'm still kind of, you know, in the process of doing that now because there's of course so many people that I want to ask and reach out to, but oh, I, I'm just, yeah, I just a, a little anxious baby and I get nervous because <laughs> it's, it's again, like, who is this person? What do you do? What do you know? Um, mm -hmm. But it's, it's so much as just a cold email with a, um, a, I, I make my little pitch packets that has a, <laughs> like a PDF of all the information they need to know, like what is shown mm -hmm. in show tunes? What, what is this? What makes this interview different? What do mm -hmm, you need mm -hmm. to prepare? What am I going to come prepared with? How long is it going to last? Blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I have all the information in the email so they don't have to ask any questions. I'm like, here's everything you need. If there's any further questions, I am always available. It's totally up to you. But for looking for people, it's, it's, doing a lot of research on my end and being familiar with people in the community who I know have either roots in theater or do professional theater. They've talked about theater experience in one of mm -hmm. their panels or whatever. Um, so it's mostly just, you know, knowing them and watching other panels that they've been in. And if they mention they do theater, I'm like, ah, oh, yes, bingo. And a lot of them now, which is, I'm really grateful to say they're, I know them personally and they are my friends. So it's, it's just a matter of like texting them and being like, Hey man, when are you free to do this? <laughs> <laughs> that's how it was with Marissa. Like Marissa is a good friend of mine. So I was just like, Hey, when do you want to do this? Do you want to do this? I think you'd be good for this. Do you want to do this? Um, so yeah, it's, it's as if, if they've expressed that they have done theater or love theater or still do theater. I'm like, come, come to me. Let's talk about it. I would love to know. Um, but yeah, I've, I've, I literally have a document on my laptop. That's just a notes, like, like a Apple notes. It's just a list of people that I want to reach out to. And if I just get scared. <laughs> <laughs> like I said before, it's tough to just do it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Like I'm like the prep is ready. The prep is there. I could go, I I literally like have drafted like questions for some of these people already and I haven't even reached out to them to do an interview. So I was just like whatever. <laughs> so you did mention that you like to ask personal questions I to do. your guests. Like what's your favorite color? What else do you like to ask them? Like <laughs> what made you think of those questions? for shonen show tunes <laughs> yeah i mean it's it's very i feel very lucky because it's all my genuine curiosity like i am very interested to know how each of them got started in theater and then how theater led them to voiceover or vice versa um mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because everybody's story is different like you know a lot of times you'll find similarities but it's i i'm always so excited to know the different things that they did or the different people that they worked with or like, who did they know? Or how did they stumble into this? Cause a lot of people were like, what's anime? I don't know. Or people were like, I wanted to do this so bad. And I literally like, it's just so exciting to see how different it is for everybody. Um, my favorite thing. I like asking them what their favorite musical or play is. Um, and then what their favorite that they've done or like, is they have, I have the, all of them are my favorite. It's so t <laughs> tough to pick one, but it's, I love to know about people's favorite things. So favorite musical. Mm -hmm. And then if they have a dream role in theater that they either have played or haven't played yet. I love, I love to know about favorites. Oh, yeah. What's your favorite then? We my, didn't ask you that. my favorite musical. Oh man, I could yeah. go on. Okay, it is a show <laughs> called The Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder. It won the Tony Award in 2014. 20, I think that if, if I'm wrong, I'm going to be smited. Um, but for Best Musical, it's um, it's a like semi well known show because like a lot of times when I say like to theater people, theater people know it, but people who don't like do theater, they're usually like, I don't know that one. Um, it's a very silly um, 
Oh my God. I, I just, I could, I could go on. I've, I, I have to like really try to get that's my thoughts. I'm like, it's just so good. It's the best. And they're so funny. And they're the best. That's not intelligent. It is about <laughs> a young man who is born into poverty or so he thinks who realizes once his mother passes that she was in line of nobility, but she was excommunicated from her family because she married, um, a musician, a poor man. Um, and it takes place in Edwardian England. So everybody has beautiful <laughs> accents and the music is very <laughs> classical. Um, but the humor is very modern. So it's the, I mean, the costumes are beautiful. The set design is beautiful. If you have time and you're interested, look up, I've decided to marry you. Uh, Tony awards, gentlemen's guide to love and murder. That's this, the performance on the Tony awards that made me be like, what is that? I need to know more about this show. What is this? <laughs> because it is the most like, it's so fast paced. There's a lot of physical comedy. It's, there's like a lot of bouncing back and forth. It's, it just, it was the perfect like preview for that show for me to be like, I need to know more about this. The vibe of this is giving me everything that I would love to have in a show. And it's since seeing that it's been my favorite ever. Since. Like that was like almost 10 years ago. And it's still my most favorite. I literally, I don't think you can see from here. Let me see this, right. This little orange thing right here is a mug from the show. Um, it's merch. And then right next to it, I have my playbill from when I saw it on Broadway for the first time in a frame. Cause it's, it, it's the best. It's the best show ever. It's the best. I love it. No matter who's performing it. It's the best. <laughs> Co no, correct. I mean like the Broadway it's, it's hard to beat the Broadway cast, but like, it's, it's just the show itself is so good. Like, I'll see it anywhere. Like, that, my college did it, uh, like, a year after I graduated, and I went back to go see it. I was like, this rocks. I love this show. And it was so good. <laughs> it's so good. Oh, and so what's the favorite you've performed in? I was lucky enough to be in A Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder in the <laughs> production. Yes! <Yeah. laughs> Yeah, so it's, again, that, it's really tough to beat that because, again, it's my favorite show. And it was my first show in Dallas since moving here. So the people in that show that I got to meet were just some of the best. They were so kind. They were so in it. Um, and it was a lot of people's first show back from COVID. So it was it was very exciting, kind of nerve wracking because there was a lot of, there was a couple COVID scares in the cast, but we ended up being fine. Mm -hmm. We didn't cancel any performances. It was wonderful. Um but it was it was just a fantastic experience. And it's again, it's my favorite show. So I was like hyped about everything, every moment. Um, but I've also been able to do some fun, um, like more comedic stuff. Cause the character that I played in that show, the show is funny in of itself, but that character, she's mm -hmm. like the beautiful one who is like, I'm I don't care about you because you're poor. I'm marrying for money. And then she she <laughs> finds out that he is in fact rich. She's like, actually I'm interested again. Uh no reason though. Um, <laughs> it's very, there's a lot more cool. dimension to her character than that. And she is actually in love with him no matter what his paycheck is. Um oh, it's so good. You have to just oh you gotta see it. Um but I was able to do a show called Women on the Verge of a Nervous Breakdown, which is hilarious because you would never imagine me in a show like that, right? It's so funny. Um, <laughs> but I got to do a, a really fun part in that show last summer. And that was that was really, really fun. You said there's like a lot of physical work in these shows. Like, what makes it feel fun? Describe it to us who are not used to this because I'm thinking about heavy breathing, choreography, <laughs> like trying to do all that at once and still having your stamina and oh, stuff. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm picturing all kinds of stuff, but try to uh, describe it to us who aren't familiar with this. <laughs> yeah, it, it is truly dependent upon, you know, the role that you have in the show that you're doing. Um, Cause like, you know, a dance ensemble there, I will never, ever be able to do what they do because they are incredible movers and they're incredible at what they do. And then they also have to be singing and carrying the, you know, the group behind the soloist or just by themselves. Like it's dance ensembles are incredible. Um, and so that, that I feel like takes a whole other level of skill. Like I, I can't do that. Um, <laughs> but it is still, you know, when you are singing that you, you have to have, a certain physicality to you because you have to be supporting it with your diaphragm and also mm -hmm. making sure you're not straining with your neck. So you have to be able to be limber. You have to make sure your body is loose as well as, you know, the muscles that are actually doing the, the singing. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
it's it, there's it, there's so many different things and then if you're playing like you know high energy comedy role typically you're doing some cardio you're running around you're being silly or you know and even the adrenaline a lot with me i know personally the adrenaline can sort of take my breath away cuz my my heart rate goes and i'm excited i'm excited i'm excited but i don't have my breath to support the notes that i need to be singing um so it's it's a lot of you just it's a lot of practice a lot of honing your emotions making sure that you're in the moment and you are focused but also still bringing that energy and not letting it just go crazy. That's something that I know mm -hmm. I struggle with because I, as I'm sure you could tell, I got a lot of energy and sometimes it just kind of, <laughs> it kind of comes out too fast. And I'm like, oh shoot, now I don't have the follow through to really round everything out and make sure that everything yeah. has, you know, the energy is portioned out instead of just being like, ah, okay, we're done. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's tough, but it's, it's the best. It's my favorite thing in the world. Did you keep, up maintain your physical stuff like your body your stamina like what do you do to do that how do you maintain it yeah i mean you have to i have i haven't been very good about it the past couple months but whatever i do <laughs> i i am a frequenter of miss planet fitness i i do love her um and i wouldn't say it's it's particularly like a necessity because you know you can look however, you can feel however, but as long as you are healthy and doing what you need to do for whatever performance that you're focusing on right now, I think that's mm -hmm. that's all you need to do. Um, so I would say it, it really does vary per person. Like, again, if you are in a dance ensemble, you have to be physically fit because you are doing crazy things, kicking your face, doing like whatever this the choreography is. Again, depending upon the show that you're in. But some of these shows, man, like the choreography is out of this world. And these these human people, they're just human people, are doing these incredible things night after night. It just, it blows my mind, man. It's very clear that this is my favorite thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how do people who are in theater balance out with being in a booth and you're kind of standing still like how do you guys balance that like what <laughs> it's it it's practice man like from everyone that i've talked to like coming from a theater background a lot of people have trouble accidentally being physical and they're like oops i hit the microphone oops my my shirt shuffled too much and we have to redo it because we heard it in the microphone um it literally just another one of my friends um took a class last night and had a moment where they heard her feet moving in the booth and the director gave her a tip of like, literally hold yourself, hold the sides of the booth to create that same body tension that you want to be creating on stage, but you, you can't. So try and do that and see if it makes the same sound. And it did, which is like, what a cool, what a cool bridge oh. to come from. Yeah. So there's a lot of tips and tricks like that, that people learn because it just, it's just from being, doing it and seeing how you translate. Cause some people have no problem, you know, they're, they're used to the stage, but then they come in mm -hmm. and they're like naturally, you know, akin to it. Um, but yeah, I know that that's, it, it's, it's tricky. It is, it is hard to remember sometimes. And also I know the thing that I have, I have a volume thing. So I'm used to projecting being on stage and trying to reach the back of the house. But when you're in a booth and the microphone is right here, you don't need to do that. So a lot of times they're like, you can be quieter. You can bring it, you can bring it back. You can be more, more intimate, more quiet, more whatever. And I'm, I'm just so not used to that translating because I'm used to having to send it out to the back of the house. Um, oh. so it is, it is very, it, it can be tricky to transition for sure. Oh, I, now I, I think I fully understand. I think with Lava, they're saying that, you know, with the anime industry's kind of routine and they want to still sharpen their skills, their techniques, their what they have already because it's not really being used in the booth right you just describing someone that needs to channel that energy yeah you need an outlet mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> oh do you think that shonen show tunes somehow your outlet now I would love for it to be. Uh, that's that's really the goal because it's still very tiny and we've only done two panels in person before and we have yet to do an actual like cabaret showcase. Mm -hmm. um, but that is that is the goal is to travel around to conventions and be able to potentially, you know, do if, if people would like for me to, to do the, you know, the autograph and whatever and the other panels and stuff, but to have that performance thing because then it's, a you know, it's like you said, it's an outlet to be able to do that, but also it's, it's a way to showcase these abilities of not just me, but any other person that would like to participate that these 
folks that are coming to these conventions don't get to see because, you know, you hear them doing all these crazy voices and, you know, their beautiful acting skills, but some of them are incredible singers. Some of them are incredible. They have a physical presence, like, and you see that in front of you and it's just like a whole other, like it's, I, I know that it's, it's like for little me, like going to these conventions, if I were able to see these people perform right in front of me, that would have like, it, it blows my mind. And it's again, like I've said, it's my favorite thing to see people do that. So to see, somebody that you already appreciate the work of while they're, you know, being a voice behind a drawing, they could be doing the physicality too. It's just, I, I, I do. Yeah. I hope that it, I hope that it catches on to for not only me selfishly, but for everybody else to be able to experience that. It would be so, it would be so cool. <laughs> what are some things that you want to be on, uh, <clears throat> on the show? Like, what are your, what plans do you want? Oh yeah. Am I, am I saying this right? <laughs> no, you, it's, I got you. I got you. I literally have like, again, I have my, my pitch packet all set and ready to go. I'm like, here's all the ideas I have. Here's all the different ways that they could do different things. We could even implement some games. So right now it, um, it would mostly be a showcase of whether you want to sing a song from a musical or you want to do a scene from a play or do a monologue from a play, like your go-to audition monologue, whatever, if whatever performance piece means something to you that you would like to showcase for this audience of your anime fans mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or just something that you want to do, like something that you're jazzed about and you would have fun doing it. Like it's just, it's just supposed to be a good time. That is the, that is the, the, the baseline is I want these actors to have a lot of fun and that will translate to the audience in a really authentic way. Um, so whether it be a song, whether it be a monologue, whether it be a scene, if you have a friend who's also going or like a partner that is also going to this convention with you, you can do a scene mm -hmm. together. Like how fun is that? That's so cool. Um, and I also have thought about implementing like some games into it, like guess the show tune, like see if this person can guess. Like, I don't know if you've seen this like on TikTok and on YouTube. Um, they will put karaoke behind you and you have to try and like, without looking at the lyrics, you have to try and guess what song it is without the lyrics in it. Um, I think that would be really fun to play with like different show tunes, like Broadway, whatever. Like they pick that. I was like, okay, let's pick your top five shows. Let's see if you can guess the song without the lyrics in it. If you know the, the instrumentals well enough, I feel like that'd be so fun to play, like to see them play that'd games. That'd be so fun. Yeah. And that'd be so easy to watch, especially like if they're, into like musicals and such exactly to play that right <laughs> and exactly. then like maybe throw in a modern song <laughs> yeah, like, yeah surprise know. pop song <laughs> surprise it's actually from a musical because a lot of musicals do that where they use songs from pop and radio to write a musical <laughs> <laughs> and then how did you come up with the name shonen show tunes yeah like, i just i love alliteration I love alliteration oh, in everything and everything. Um, so I I don't, I think I just, I, I don't have like a cool story. Like I just thought of it. Like I just was thinking, I was like, what would be a fun thing? So like an anime word that starts with sha and then a Broadway word that starts with sha. Shonen show tunes. It's like <laughs> the first parts have the same syllable and consonants. Um, so I just thought it was a cute little alliteration thing. I love it. It, to combine the, the anime with <laughs> the Broadway. That is what I want. I, that's, that's just what I want. I want the fusion of anime and Broadway. Give, yeah. Do that. <laughs> so when you do the panels, do you like prep with the guests and kind of go over? So what would you like to showcase or show the audience? What do you want to talk about and try to integrate that with your program? Like what's the process for that? It sounds like there's a lot of coordination going on. Yeah, I mean, with the last one, um, I didn't have a chance to talk to any of them ahead of time, other than Rico, of course. Um, but I sort of have my set questions. Um, so what I do is I have a QR code to um, my website that has the a submission box. So while I am asking my questions that I already have set, which is just the generic, like, what was your introduction to theater? What is your favorite show? Blah, blah, blah. Like my basic baseline, I ask everybody these to get the conversation started. So while mm -hmm. that's going on, people can put the QR code on their phone and then submit their questions on like through their phone. And then I have my iPad or phone or whatever. And then I can go through the questions and make sure that the questions are still on topic for theater. So I can choose from the audience questions to be like, oh, this is a good one. 
this is and this is already like going deeper into something we already talked about so i can still kind of lead the discussion but also there is audience participation so they can sort of have input to where the conversation goes that's so smart to keep it <laughs> flowing with your question to keep me like okay this would good will be really good next and then this yeah. one and oh and everybody can still be involved exactly that's so nice. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. I put, I put a lot of thought into this. I'm really, I'm really excited. And I love, I love hosting panels also like just regular Q and a panels. And I love the idea of that being the thing where the host can be a professional host and keep the conversation flowing and really make it interesting and not be mm -hmm. monotonous for, you know, when it's, cause it's, it's exciting, right. To go up to the microphone and be able to ask them your question, but you could do that if you go up to their autograph table and you can support them by buying a, you know, a, an autograph mm -hmm. or a picture or whatever, and you can have an intimate conversation with them just one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. So when it's in like a group setting, I think it's so cool when there is a host there to keep the conversation going. And that's, I know what I like to do is I start it with my own questions to get the conversation flowing. And then hopefully that will inspire the audience members to ask more detailed questions about it. And then I really, mm -hmm. I really would love to implement that of like submitting your questions via the phone. So that way the host can choose and be able to make it, like a really good interview, really. Yeah, because you can translate it um, in a way where maybe the guests would understand it better, or right, exactly, more exactly. Answers, you know, exactly. Like it, could, like it could be a simple question sent to you. You're like, oh no, we need to like get more answers. Beef it up, little question. Exactly, yeah. but exactly. It up. <laughs> so it ends up taking the question that they might have, you know, because they're just, you know, they're just human beings coming to an anime convention. They, you know, they're not professional interviewers. So to have that, like to somebody to help them essentially ask them or help them ask a question that they could get a wealth of information even more than if they, they didn't even realize that they could word it differently to have, you know, this beautiful pool of knowledge presented to mm -hmm. them. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's something that really excites me. And I know that me and my friends that are, um, we're working on, putting together our, we're, we're like marketing ourselves as hosts for um, conventions around the area. Cause that's something we all really love. And we all mm -hmm. are very interested in doing is really be a beefing up the Q and a game at conventions nice. with the voice actors. Yeah. <laughs> I remember one time I was at a convention and we were at a panel for Japanese voice actors. And this is one person in the audience they stood up with the mic and they asked the people in Japanese and I was thinking excuse me I don't know Japanese <laughs> <laughs> and and the the cast the people on the panel they had an interpreter and she interpreted for us uh -huh. I was like thank you <laughs> right right that's so cool oh. Yeah, and then I was like, I wonder what would happen if there is someone like Lexi there, and that person actually just <laughs> sent that question in. <laughs> right. but, that's a whole different game. It's like translating languages. Like that's a whole other skill to have. Like a host, because that's that's also a thing. Like um, Lauren um, Lauren Moore, who is one of Crunchyroll's main hosts, she does that to where she is she is the host, but then there's also a translator and then there's the Japanese guest. So she is hosting, taking the audience questions, forming them into a host question and then having the interpreter communicate that. And like, it's like a, a beautiful flow of energy, which is, I just, I have mad respect for her. I'm obsessed with Lauren. She's incredible. For Shonen Show Tunes, what did you enjoy about it? Like, what are your favorite moments in your previous you know, YouTube videos or on the panels at conventions. It's, I mean, this is the same for me in any, any thing ever, not just Shonen Show Tunes, but in anything that I do, it's getting to connect with the people and getting to learn about the people and, you know, person to person, seeing them get to talk about something that they very obviously love that they don't always get to talk about at the, in these settings. Um, mm -hmm. That was really exciting for me, especially the first time we did a panel with three folks that I had never gotten to speak to before. Um, it was so cool to hear them just go off and just go on and on about all these things and be so excited about it. It's, it's my favorite thing. Um, oh, yeah. I just was super excited. You're like, tell me more. Right, right. That's that's what I hope because that's how I was up there with my silly little microphone. Um, <laughs> but the the biggest compliment was um, Emily Neves, who voices Ari in My Hero Academia. Um, 
she she at one point made the comment of she was like i want this panel to go on for two more hours this is really fun and i was like that is literally like the best thing you could have said like that what a huge compliment that's so cool oh that's amazing gosh and so it kind of sounded like you had kind of a short time to coordinate the first panel at the convention how long did you have to set everything up it was tricky right because i did a lot of my own prep work just on my time so that's you know how I, like i was prepping for months but actually getting it set up like it was like a couple weeks not even it was like a week before the the convention that i had all the guests fully confirmed that they were participating and they were doing it so <laughs> Yeah, it was a lot of like me preparing things, like making all the graphics, like with their headshots, even though I wasn't sure if they were actually going to be in it yet. Like just, just making it ahead of time, <laughs> just in case. Right. Um, so I'm I'm still to this day. That was like that was two years ago now almost. Um, I'm so grateful that worked out because that was just it was so cool and it was so exciting. And I'm really excited, hopefully to do it again. I'm trying to trying to trying to organize things because it's it's tough, right? Because with convention programming a lot of it is kind of up in the air until the day comes because they don't know what's going to work what's not going to work what schedules mm -hmm. are going to look like canceled flights delays guests having gigs that come up to where they their availability changes it's all very you know it's tough to do a lot of prep work ahead of time because you just don't know what's going to happen what the circumstances are going to be um mm -hmm. So it is, it is tricky to do, but I try to be as prepared as possible. So whatever the outcome is, I'm ready for it. Nice. <laughs> and then, um, so what are you, how do you balance everything now since you've been known more as a voice actor? Have you been offered more gigs? Have you been prepping for more stuff have you been focusing more on musical or like what's going on where's the balance like, it's busy. just <laughs> i don't know i i still feel like i have way too much free time and i still feel like i'm not doing enough every day which is right like to, to people who aren't me inside my brain they're like what do you mean but to me i'm like I'm, i need to do more i need to keep i gotta work harder i gotta work harder um but it's it's been very lucky because you know when you are in entertainment or any any industry, whatever you may be in, um, the more that you are in one area and the more that you do and the more people you meet, I feel like the work just comes. So in mm -hmm. both voiceover and in theater, because I've been doing stuff around the area, the work has been coming more consistently, which is very cool and very exciting. Um, oh. So yeah, it's been, it's been very cool to have more opportunities both in live performance and at Crunchyroll. It's been, it's been very cool. Oh man. Yeah. And how do you think, how, do you, how are you going to fit Shonen Show Tunes with all of this? Because you want to be part of the conventions in the local area. Are you planning to go global? You want to go across the country, go to different conventions, get people on Shonen Show Tunes, get them on the panels, like work it. <laughs> That's what I would love to do, truly. Um, <laughs> because, you know, it's it's a lot of setting my own schedule and doing a lot of time management, which I am unfortunately very poor at right now. Um, but because, you know, there's like work time, I have a session from blah, blah, blah to blah, blah time, rehearsal time. I have rehearsal from this time to this time. So then in between those things, that's when I schedule like, okay, this is my personal work. So that's when I do my prep work. That's when I do mm -hmm. my research. That's when I do, cause doing show and show tune stuff doesn't really feel like work. Cause I'm so excited about it. It kind of just, it's like how I spend my time. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's not difficult, which is, you know, I, I'm, I'm tired, but it doesn't feel like I'm, I, again, I still feel like I could be working harder. I could be doing more. So mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and then who do you want to be on Shonen Show 2? Oh, like, golly. Who's on your list? <laughs> Just Rico. <laughs> um no, it's, there's so many folks, right? Like Caitlin obviously is one because she does a lot of Shakespeare work around the area. She is, she does theater. She loves theater. Um, Sean Gann is another director at Crunchyroll that does a lot of theater around the area. Um, my friend Kyle Ignazy was actually in Gentleman's Guide with me and he does a lot of um, stuff at Crunchyroll. And I, I really want him to be 
Um, even if it's not at the convention game, I really want him to be at least interviewed. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And we've talked about it already. We know it's it's going to happen. We just don't know when because he's about to have a second child. So you know that's kind of uh, yeah, that, that's kind of you know busy in your life. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's so many like um, Brandon McInnes and J. Michael Tatum are both like incredible theater people that are lovely. Um, the li- I literally, like I said, I have a list of people. Uh, draw- John Gremion, who voices a uh, gentle criminal in My Hero, is like, he, like, still does professional theater and like is a big musical person. And I had no idea. So I was like, oh man, we got to talk about this. Um, we got to talk briefly about it at the, the um, convention I hosted at back in February. Um, there's a ton of people, man. There's, there's so many folks that, that do theater in the area. Oh, so, so I heard that. It's really good if people find out that the voice actor uh, has a background of theater, musical theater, because like, okay, so they have experience, they know how to control their voices and such. Has it ever occurred to you to talk to your fellow music theater colleagues like hey have you ever thought about doing voice acting <laughs> oh they they always bring it up like because i'm like oh i because they'll always ask me like oh what do you do outside of theater or whatever i'm like oh i am lucky enough to do stuff at crunchy roll that's why i moved to dallas and they're like i've always wanted to do that i've always been interested to do that so they're like a lot of them are like into it and they would want to try it so that i a lot of them would be very good at it so that's it, it is it is a very common topic of conversation for sure <laughs> and you're like, okay, just let them know that Lexi sent you. Okay? <laughs> nah, you know, yeah, that's not gonna. They'll be like, oh, Lexi sent you. Get out of here. You're, you're whack. <laughs> <laughs> or if they do say that, people are going to like automatically think. So, are you? Do you can you be as loud as Lexi? <laughs> can you be as energetic? Man, as I Lexi? hope Lexi kind of brought up the bar there. You know. No. <laughs> No, they're like, oh, we can put the gain at a normal level on our <laughs> on our interfaces. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. So do you have to like kind of position yourself to channel your energy too? Like your friend that um moved her feet and then they had to grab onto the walls. Like, do you have to do that too? Or is it just step back from the mind? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Luckily, I've, you know. That hasn't been a huge problem for me. Thankfully, I think I've, I've got enough practice from doing smaller things and taking classes and stuff. Um, mm-hmm. But I know that even still sometimes like doing Walla and stuff where there's like crowd cheering, like I'll want to like jump and like clap or something. But I'm like, I can't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. It's going to ruin the take. Um, so it's just it's it's always like taking a second, like right before I start to be like, oh, nope, we're here. We're here. We're in we're in the within the four walls. The microphone is there. You don't have to do that. Great. Let's let's think about it and imagine that you are doing it but don't actually do it. Um, so that, that's just, that's just with practice. So th- thankfully I don't have to do that anymore. And I've, I've learned that a lot of it comes more from any sort of like prepping that I would do physically on a stage just comes from taking a deep breath down here. So like mm-hmm. getting in like a stance or something like, especially with like tomo screams, like a lot of it would be like, all right, I got, I'm going to brace my body. Here we go. And then it would be more like that than jumping around or whatever. And even sometimes too, like I will in between stuff, if she's been like running or like, it's, it's like a hype up, I will do a couple hops or like do a little thing. But before we start rolling, obviously <laughs> I do that all the time. I will. I'm, I'm jumping in there, man. Love it. <laughs> Love knowing like the behind the scenes, a little prep stuff. <laughs> oh, it's my favorite. It's I've watched every, every behind the scenes within the booth Funimation thing that they released back in the day. I've seen it. I'm obsessed. <laughs> it's so cool. And then do you, have you found yourself wearing certain clothes before you go into the booths because you don't want it to like rustle? You don't want the mic to catch the sound and such? Because I never really thought about that. But have yeah. you unconsciously been wearing certain clothes? Yeah. Recording? Yeah. Um, I think I've been okay at being conscious because also my, my, fashion sense is usually just cotton. So it doesn't make a lot of noise. Uh, but sometimes I'll be wearing a jacket that I'll have to take off or like jewelry is a big thing too. Like if you're wearing clacky earrings or you're wearing a big necklace, you can't, you can't do that because it'll make noise if you move at all. So I know that I never, I used to be like, I'm going to come up dressed up to the studio. I'm going to look nice. No girl, you're not. You're going to come with your hair in a bun and in a tank top and shorts because anything else is going to make sound. Don't do that. <laughs> Oh, 
the truth. <laughs> yeah, it's it's something that you would never even think about until it happens. And you're like, ah, oh, shoot. Well, I can't do that. <laughs> the movies, the shows, they lie. They show. Yeah, these, yeah exactly. These, these musicians going into the booth with all their glam and yeah. their lies. The lies. Yeah. You just you can still be glam. You just have to kind of adjust it a little bit. <laughs> channel that glam somewhere where it doesn't right. make noise <laughs> exactly i was like i'll be wearing eyelashes all day but <laughs> that don't make no noise it'll be good are you working on any musicals right now in theater because i know i've been focusing a lot on anime and shonen show tunes but how is your musical theater life it's wonderful doing? It is really wonderful. I just recently did um, Tarzan at a at a local theater downtown in Dallas, and it was really really fun. The theater is beautiful. I got to play Turk, which was so fun. <laughs> <laughs> it was a blast, and the people in that show are amazing. And then the team, like the creative team and the people that work at that theater, were really kind, and we got along very well. So um, I'm about to be in the ensemble of Cinderella, yeah, starting <gasps> next month. Yeah, oh it's gonna be really God. cool. Cinderella. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's going to be very cool. I'm excited. Wow. And then um, what musicals do you want to be in the future? Because you already told us what favorite musical you were in, but what do you want to be in next? Yeah. Um, I love Shrek the Musical, which sounds like a joke, but I'm so serious. The Shrek the Musical is fantastic. I really would love to play Princess Fiona because the actress that originated it on Broadway, her name is Sutton Foster, and she is an incredible inspiration of mine, as with any other theater girl ever. Like, that's such a basic thing to say, but I've, ever since I knew who she was, she's been my, my favorite gal on the, on the Broadway. Um, so I've, I've always wanted to do that for sure because it'd be so much fun. And then a very similar role is Princess Winifred in a show called Once Upon a Mattress, which um, is a, it's a musical about the princess and the pea. And sh this, this character, it's very similar to Fiona. She's like, she's a princess, but she's like, I'm from the swamp. I don't care. I'm dirty. I don't get it. And she's very like loud and silly and very funny. And her songs are very <laughs> brassy and belty. And that's all my favorite stuff. So those are two, two really big ones that I would love to do. Oh my gosh. <laughs> they sound hilarious and so entertaining. And there's so much energy in them just from you describing it. <laughs> it's really fun. Uh, Shrek the Musical is on Netflix if you haven't seen it. I highly recommend it. It's it's a it's a ton of fun, dude. <laughs> Netflix sponsor. Yes. Ne not even sponsor. I said go support my girl Sutton and my man Brian. They're all they're incredible. <laughs> What do you want the audience to know about yourself? Like something random. Oh, like gosh. I really enjoy banana pudding and banana cream pie, but without the almonds. So it tastes like banana pudding. Um, big fan of that. Also, um, cookie dough or cookie. No, cookies with frosting, like buttercream frosting or ice cream is my favorite dessert. What? Very important. <laughs> Hint, hint, wink, wink. <laughs> no, don't, no, you can't. You're not allowed to bring food to people. Don't do it. Don't do it. That's bad. That's bad. <laughs> Watch, you're going to see people with their food confiscated. <laughs> yeah, right. I was like, no, I feel so bad. Just a general, just a, just a tidbit. Yeah, just a little fact. <laughs> Oh my god. And then I always want to know this for some reason. What's your favorite color? Oh man. Okay, this is a loaded question, right? Because I have oh. several for different reasons. Um this this is a big one. This one right here, this blue is a big that's been a forever uh, day one. That's my home girl. Um but I also love like this pink, like a light pink. These together, mm -hmm. love that also. But also I'm a big fan of yellow. So it's, it's, and I love gold. I love, so it's, it's, I, those are my favorite. I think these, these three, that's my faves. <laughs> these three right here. One, two, three, my favorites. And then the, the combo of yellow and blue, obviously is, I, I love, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and where can people find you on social media and such? Like, Twitter, Instagram, your website. Yeah. Where they can find you, yo. 
Yeah, all of the above. Um, yeah, Twitter is the only different one because it's got an underscore between my first and last name, which is very annoying because the person that has at Lexi Nieto hasn't used Twitter since like 2013. So get on that Twitter. What's the deal, Elon? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's Lexi underscore Nieto on Twitter. And then on Instagram is just Lexi Nieto. And then my website is just LexiNieto.com. Nice. Check it out. Oh, LexiNieto.com slash shown in show tunes. That too, can't it's forget there. that, yo. It's a thing. It's there. <laughs> Go check it out. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody else who has questions for Lexi in podcasts across worlds, you can find me on all platforms across the board at Lehua Superfina. And you can find our website at lehuasuperfina.com. Where are we going to have this episode there too? <laughs> Woo, let's go thank you so much Alexi, for being on podcast across worlds talking about post tomochan is <laughs> girl, talking about shonen show tunes talking about your musical theater and everything else around it we appreciate all of that love your stories oh my god <laughs> happy to them. be here thanks for bringing <laughs> me back i'm glad i didn't sh- i didn't scare you all away from the first time <laughs> <laughs> and thank you everybody for listening to podcasts across worlds keep reading manga keep watching anime and keep listening to podcasts across worlds we'll see you on the next one Woo! thank you for listening to podcasts across worlds this is a passion project that was created by lehua superfina and is co-hosted by myself michael casnova If you enjoyed this episode and any of the topics that we talk about or any of the guests and voice actors and various people we have on the show, then make sure you do us a solid by if you're watching it on YouTube, which is on youtube.com slash lehuasuperfina, then make sure you like the video, share it around with someone you think would enjoy it, as well as leave a comment on what you think could be improved or what you liked, what you didn't like, and all that in between. If you're listening to the show on any of the major podcasting outlets, such as Amazon Music, Spotify, TuneIn Radio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or any of the others, then make sure you leave a rating, leave a comment, interact with the polls that we put out, and so much more. If you want to support the show, we do have Patreon, as well as many other methods for supporting. And with that being said, we're signing out. We hope you enjoyed this, and we look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Keep listening, keep watching, and keep enjoying podcasts across worlds. We'll see you around.